Hey guys, my name is Kevin Nikowski with Time Knowledge Power, and here's the part two series on how to master a topic in a week. So, you already remember the first key point, and the first key point was to find the best teacher out there. The second key point is to become adept at Google searching. Like, this is absolutely key. Now, a lot of you probably understand this, but what, is, what does Google know about you? Um, everything. What does Google know in general? Um, everything and because of that if you can you know hone your skills in typing the right things that are you know other people are going to be looking for because you know Google bases it off of what people are looking for right because you know we are the product on Google you know one of my favorite quotes is if it's free you're the product or if you're not paying for it you're the product and so you essentially are the product for Google they know everything about you they sell that information out and on top of that um, they you know give you ads okay but it's actually really helpful because it'll you know key what you're putting in to what they think that you want to look up so for instance in Google um, you want to you know hone your skill in being able to type in the right phrase so you can basically find the right information know whether to look at a forum know whether to look at images and be able to you know, extrapolate and imagine what other people are going to be searching for because, you know, Google bases their algorithms off of that. You know, what are we all using? So that's number one. And, or number two technically, but number one for this video. And, you know, as Einstein famously said, never, never memorize something that you can look up. And, you know, it's really powerful because Google has all the information at your fingertips. So if you know how to properly search on Google, you have all the information at your fingertips just as Einstein said. Now, this can actually help you become a quick learner because if you can find the information faster, you save time. And if you save time, you can learn topics a lot a lot, uh, a lot, quicker. And also, if you know how to search correctly, you can find the related topics that are on Google. Now, I'm not gonna go into what is the best you know, mechanism to go about searching, but there are you know, key pieces that can actually help you know, aid your searches, such as like typing in the like in URL without a space and put, put a colon and then put your word, it'll find something that you know, has it in the URL. Just as an example, um, you would use that you know, if you were looking for something very specific and you think that Google wouldn't pull up that as their first result, or if your page is flooded, or if the Google search is flooded with a lot of um, information about like, like you want to know about time and everything's about Time Magazine, well, that's not necessarily going to tell you about time that you're looking for. Maybe you're looking to save time, just as an example. So you might type that in URL colon and put you know the word time. Okay, let's move on to the next piece. The next piece is you know you probably already understand how to Google search and if not you know practice at it and get better at it because you know getting better at it is going to help you learn a lot faster. But on top of that, the the next thing to understand is that you should study at appropriate times. And what does that mean? Studying at appropriate times means that you know if you hit your your 2 p.m. crash. And you're like, oh, you know, I'm so tired. Probably not the best time to study. You want to study when you're in a wide awake. That for most people would actually be the morning. So plan your schedule around this because let, let's say you're studying and you're kind of like dozing off or drifting or like imagining something else. Uh, maybe you've even been studying for, you know, an hour and a half or something. That's going to be a problem because now you're essentially going to be, you know, spending, let's say, 30 minutes to learn, you know, half a page. Whereas if you were you know, wide awake and ready to go, it would only take you, you know, 10 minutes. So you're actually wasting time. And on top of that, if you're just learning these things by repeating it and repeating it, that's not going to be beneficial for you. And it's probably going to be forgotten because it's not elaboratively encoded into your brain because that's the ideal if you really want to retain information at a fast rate. So what are the best times to study is the next question. The best times to study is when you're active. So I actually personally study by walking. So I you know, go to the gym, and I take my notebook, and I just walk around the track multiple times, or I walk on the treadmill. That's beneficial for me. Um, also, like more important than just walking around and being active, because you know, when you are active, your brain actually has uh, so much more energy usage, which is a benefit to you, because that means your neurons are working. And that's also going to allow them to, um, I guess, I can use this word a little loosely, but synchronize with the other neurons that you're activating while you're studying that material. But then the other more important piece is to study at the right time. So by studying at an appropriate time, that means the morning is gonna be the best time as I had you know, just mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, but does that mean that you should do it right when you wake up? You know, that, that's gonna be up to you. I don't know when you're most awake, but when you're most awake, that's the best time to study. 
um, appropriate times might also be when you're not stimulated enough from outside like or external stimuli so that means when you're driving maybe that's a good time to study because it's, it's really boring if you're in traffic or something that gives you a lot of brain power to use for your study time it's actually a way that you can save time in your day um, I wouldn't recommend using note cards when you're driving because you know to essentially do anything while you're driving is technically illegal but um, you can record yourself and then study from that recording or a, an appropriate time to study would be when it's you know very quiet in, in your house you can record yourself during that time so that when you actually go to listen to it again all of the you know extra noise in the background is gone and it'll help you um, focus even more on the information that you have at hand and so you know that's really the key uh, two points in this video so so far we have hit uh, Find the best teacher out there. Spend two to three hours, if not more, finding the best teacher. It's going to be worth your time. Become adept at Google searching. This is actually going to key into the first um, piece to master a topic in a week. And then the next one that we also talked about today was study at appropriate times, so not when you're exhausted, and try to stimulate your mind while you're doing it. Eat the right foods, uh, some beneficial foods to eat. Um, I mean, if you're not using nootropics, which are like brain supplements, such as like CoQ10, or uh, phosphatidylserine is actually really beneficial. There's some other stuff. You can actually check out the Time Knowledge Power website on um, some nootropics that I, I recommend and that I personally take. But if you eat leafy greens, leafy greens have, oh, I don't remember what chemical it is. It starts with a P and it's got like, I don't know, like 14 letters or characters in it. Um, but it actually has been shown to boost um, memory attainment or memory retention. Uh, let's see, fish. Omega-3 is actually beneficial. Omega-3 is what's essentially in your myelin sheath. So that uh, myelin sheath is in like the coating around your neurons. So if you coat your neurons, you're going to be able to retain more information because it's going to allow them to transfer information a lot quicker. And then the last thing I mentioned exercise, but I want to mention exercise with respect to it'll help actually um, synchronize what you're studying to, or that's the thought. I don't know if the theory actually holds up. I guess we'll find out. And that's it. I will see you next time. Now reach the end of this video, which means that you found value in the content that I've provided here. So what's holding you back from hitting the like or subscribe button so that I can bring this content to viewers just like you? Did you know that when you like a video, it actually goes into a neat little playlist? Perfect for referencing information later on. So for more powerful content on how to save more time, build your knowledge repertoire, and gain more power in your life, visit timeknowledgepower.com. Click below, and I'll see you next time.